Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, a webcast, an online show, um, whatever you want to call us. We are here live every morning, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, however, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week and post it to our website so you will be able to um, watch any of our recordings later. And I will show you at the end of today's show where the website is and where all those recordings are available for you. Um, both the live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do um, share with your uh, colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, anyone who may have an interest in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, tell them they can sign up for our, our live shows or watch any of our recordings out there. Uh, Encompass Live premiered in January of 2009 and we have all of our recordings are on our website um, that you can link to and watch them via our uh, the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube account. Uh, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, training sessions, interviews, tour, you know, tours, demos of products and services. Uh, basically our only criteria is that it is something library related um, and any kind of libraries, um, school, public, academic, special, prisons, uh, institutional, whatever, um, that's really our only thing. Is it something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing themselves, something that may be of interest to them? Um, that's what we have on the show. Um, we do sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations, um, and but we also bring in guest speakers, um, as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us from um, East Coast, as well, some of you heard in the beginning, West Virginia. Uh, Beth Anderson is director at the Burnsville Public Library in Burnsville, West Virginia. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, everybody. And also along with us is Samantha Lopez, who's I think you're up in Chicago, correct? That is correct. All right, I remember who she is actually from the uh, Public Library Association from PLA. And um, they're going to talk to us about this new um, initiative from PLA, Project Outcome which um, I'd actually I'd had on my radar last year sometime when they first talked about me reading up on it. And I finally was able to get Svetha and um, Beth, who's used this, to uh, come on the show and tell us all about it. So I will just hand over to you guys to take it away and tell us about uh, Project Outcome. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Krista. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Encompass Live presentation on Project Outcome. Today's presentation is brought to you by the Public Library Association, a division of the American Library Association here in Chicago. PLA provides our members with a vast array of products and services to help public librarians succeed in their profession. Today I will be talking about Project Outcome, which is a free product PLA provides. You do not need to be a PLA member to use Project Outcome. It is available for free for all U.S. and Canadian public libraries. As Chris already said, uh, my name is Samantha Lopez. I am the project coordinator for Project Outcome here at PLA, and I'm joined today by Beth Anderson, the director of Burnsville Public Library in West Virginia. Beth presented with PLA at the West Virginia Library Association conference last fall, and I'm glad to have her back with us to talk about the benefits of Project Outcome for small libraries. I also want to th thank you, Krista, again, for inviting us on this presentation. Here's a quick overview of today's agenda and what we'll be covering. Um, please feel free, as Krista said, to ask questions along the way. Um, in the chat box, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So please ask any and all questions you might have. So first, what is Project Outcome? You might have heard about us, um, but you still might be unsure of what we are, what we provide. Project Outcome is a free online toolkit designed to help public libraries understand and share the true impact of their services and programs by providing simple surveys and an easy to use process for measuring and analyzing outcomes. Project Outcome also provides libraries with the resources and training support needed to apply their results and confidently advocate for their library's future. You can find us at www.projectoutcome.org. But before I dive into the details of the Project Outcome Toolkit and all that it provides, 
I want to take a few minutes to clarify what we mean by outcomes and why we are helping libraries measure them. For years, libraries have gauged success through their patron stories, and the core metric has been how often they came back for more. But times have changed, and so have libraries. Your valuable services can't live on intuition alone because insights, not anecdotes, will improve the way libraries do business. To show their impact, libraries need more data and evidence. You may already be measuring your impact in a variety of ways, like collecting outputs or asking your patrons if they're satisfied with your services. Needs assessments help the library answer what does our community need. Patron satisfaction surveys help answer what should we do better, and outputs help answer how much did we do. Measuring outcomes doesn't mean you stop doing these other things. It simply means you're gathering even more data to create a more compelling story for your library. Measuring outcomes helps the library answer what good did we do. So what exactly do we mean by outcomes? Outcomes are simply what your library patrons feel they learned or gained from attending a library program or service. Outcomes can be qualitative or quantitative, and again, they answer that question, what good did we do? This was an image used recently by one of our guest presenters on our last webinar, which happened last week, and since it made me laugh, I included <laughs> it here for any visual learners out there. Um, inputs being what the library puts into a program or service or even circulation. So how much is it costing, how many staff, how many hours, how many checkouts, etc. And outputs are what comes out of the program or service. So how many people attended, how many times was the book checked out, and so on. The outcomes are then what the patron actually gets from the inputs. Did they learn something new? Did they plan on using what they learned when they get home? Are they more confident as a result of the library's program or service? So now you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but who has time to do this? I'm busy doing all the other things I need to do to run my library, and if you're someone like Beth and you're the director and you're kind of running the show because you have 1.03 employees at your library, then you might be thinking this exact thing right now. And that's what we're here for. You've been told you should measure outcomes, you understand why they're important, you need to better tell your library's story, and you need a consistent way of doing so. Because you're so busy, PLA has already done a majority of the work for you. Instead of reinventing the wheel, we've created Project Outcome to make measuring your patrons' outcomes as quick and easy as possible. Now I'm going to go into um, the actual surveys we provide and um, the tools that are available on our website. So Project Outcome, as I said, is a free online toolkit that provides public libraries with access to quick and simple patron surveys, a survey portal to collect and enter your survey data, ready-made data reports so you don't have to do anything once the data is collected. The system generates reports for you. And all of the resources and training libraries need to help them be successful throughout the outcome measurement process. We have heard from our users that the combination of the ready-to-go surveys and the easy-to-use tools really help library staff save time and energy in planning their data collection, leaving more time for decision making and advocacy once the results are in. To reiterate, all the surveys, tools, and resources that I go through today and are available on Project Outcome are free and you do not need to be a PLA member to use them. You would be surprised how much I have to say that it's all free and I still get the question, but how much does it cost? So I'm going to say that several times. It is free. It is available to you for free. Sounds very, very familiar, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I get that a lot. I handle the... Um, so I'm the project coordinator. I do a lot of things, but on top of that, I do all the help desk um, things for the Project Outcome website, all your all your questions come to me essentially and so many times it's oh I just went to this program I went to this conference I heard about project outcome they said it's free but but really how how much tell me it? the truth <laughs> yeah tell me the truth <laughs> so I'm giving it to you free it is free it was provided initially um, grant funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, wow. but PLA is dedicated to keeping and maintaining what we have developed so far 
free for public libraries beyond the grant, which ends it tw in 2018. Nice. Okay. So I just want to get that out of the way. <laughs> um, so the task force that developed project outcome. Uh, the task force was developed because in 2013, our then PLA president, Carolyn Anthony, saw a gap in need in the field. While many libraries were measuring outcomes, they weren't doing so consistently or in a standardized way. She wanted to provide a way for libraries to easily and consistently measure the outcomes of their programs and services so that outcome measurement could become a field-wide practice. The surveys and outcomes themselves are the foundation of the Project Outcome Toolkit, and they were created by our Performance Measurement Task Force, which is made up of a diverse group of public and state librarians and researchers. And they have gone through the testing and vetting process of the outcome questions so that you don't have to. So if you're wondering if PLA just made all of this up, we did not. Um, it was developed by a task force. It seems very simple and easy, and it's because the task force worked for a long time to make it appear so. So you can kind of rest, rest assured that PLA did not make this up on a whim. Um, it was made and created by your peers. In its early work, the task force identified seven key survey areas that cover the broad range of programs and services libraries provide. Outcome measurement surveys were developed for each of these seven areas. So as you can see here, we have surveys that cover civic community engagement, early childhood literacy, digital learning, education and lifelong learning, job skills, economic development, and of course, summer rating. Not surprisingly, um, the, the highest number of surveys we have in a topic is summer rating. Summer rating technically has three surveys underneath it. It's the only one that's like that. Um, we started off with one survey for summer rating, but as we launched in 2015, we heard back from our users that the questions weren't really asking what they needed from their summer reading programs. So the task force developed three different summer reading surveys that can either be administered to the teen or child themselves, um, to the caregiver of the child, or even um, for the participants of any adult summer reading programs you might have. So we have three options available there. There are highest, um, number of surveys because that's probably the most likely um, the highest attended programs that you have throughout the year but the most popular survey topics that we see come in in terms of scheduling new surveys but might have less responses um, that would be education and lifelong learning because it's the broadest survey so it covers um, a variety of programs that might not fit under the other survey topics and of course early childhood literacy that's also one of our more popular surveys. The task force designed all of the project outcome surveys to capture four key outcomes knowledge, confidence, behavior change, and awareness. They felt these four outcomes when measured together provide the best insight into impact and whether or not patrons will actually use what they learned once they leave the library. All of the surveys include two open-ended questions so libraries can get the most out of their patrons' feedback. What did they like most about the program and what can the library do to improve? These open-ended questions have been invaluable to libraries. Here is where they gain the most insight into how to help their patrons and gather anecdotal evidence to support their impact stories. So those open-ended <clears throat> those open-ended questions are where libraries can kind of pull those really great quotes to complement um, the scores from their outcome Likert scale questions. There are three outcome measurement tools developed by the task force that help libraries measure different patron reported benefits based on what the library wants to learn. The immediate surveys are for patron reported learning. The follow-up surveys are for patron-reported adoption or application. And the outcome measurement guidelines are so you can design your own surveys and data gathering methods to capture long-term impact. You can use all of these tools or any combination or just one. Uh, not surprisingly, our immediate surveys, that's what we initially launched. Um, with Project Outcome, that's all we had in place, and those still are our most popular surveys because they're the easiest to do. The immediate surveys are designed to capture that patron-reported learning and the immediate impact of the program. 
The immediate surveys take less staff time than the other methods and they only require a little bit of planning. So you'll simply decide which program to survey, schedule the survey in the portal, give out the surveys at the end of the program and enter the data. All of our surveys are also available in paper and online formats and are translated into Spanish. The immediate survey data is good for a quick snapshot assessment of how you're doing and what your patrons feel they've gained right after a program or service. They're an excellent way to collect data to understand how the library is doing at any moment in time. The follow-up surveys are designed to capture a patron reported adoption and the longer impact of the program. The follow-up survey option takes more staff time than the immediate surveys and it requires more planning and collection of patrons' contact information. Some libraries might have limited staff capacity and will choose to just stick with the immediate surveys because they're quick and easy to do, and that's okay too. But when a library needs to answer the question, but what are they actually doing after they leave the library, then the follow-up surveys are the way to go. Follow-up survey data is good for assessing longer-term impact and answering the question, are your patrons actually using what they learned once they leave the library? It also helps provide strong evidence for advocacy and planning and helps measure progress towards strategic goals. Here's a snapshot of the type of outcome data collected from both surveys. Like I said, libraries can pick and choose which surveys they want to use based on their needs and capacity. Combining surveys will give libraries a broader picture of their impact. For example, a library using both would be able to say our programs help patrons feel more confident about searching for a job and that they actually applied for jobs using what they learned. But as a reminder, you don't need to combine the surveys to get useful data. You can still use one or the other. The outcome measurement guidelines are not yet public and will be released sometime this year. They are designed to help libraries measure outcomes with a community impact goal in mind. This type of measurement will likely require libraries to develop their own outcomes based on long-term partnership goals, and the guidelines will help libraries work through that process. Everything for Project Outcome can be found on the website, uh, projectoutcome.org. Registration is free and only takes a few simple steps to begin. The website provides helpful resources for libraries to get started using the tools and how to use the results for advocacy or decision making. The survey portal tool is where you'll schedule, access, and input the data results from all of your surveys. This is a snapshot of the survey portal. Right now we use University of Washington's Impact Survey platform to host our survey portal. We are currently developing and designing a brand new portal which will launch this May and the new survey portal will allow for more flexibility and customization of the surveys. So this is what it looks like right now but it is changing very very soon and I'm very excited about these changes um, and I think all of our libraries will be too. In the survey portal you'll get reports automatically generated for you once you close a survey. They are designed for you to quickly and easily analyze and talk about your results and even to share with your staff or library board. So you get um, a CSV Excel download of all of your raw data and that's where you can kind of, you know, sift through your data. If you like to make your own charts, you know, that's where you can do that. That's where you can see all your open-ended comments and the locations where they came from. But if you don't want to do any of that work, you also can look to this summary report that we have available that provides talking points about um, that specific survey topic and why it's important to the community. Um, it gives a breakdown of the programs and the sessions and the attendance of, that were measured under that survey. Um, also provides a quick snapshot of the outcome results um, of the four you know, key questions of that survey and what you saw come in. And we know that libraries really like um, this automated report aspect of the survey portal. Um, they can take it, they could share it with their staff, um, they could share it with their board, and it's really easy to use. You don't have to do anything, um, and it kind of does all of the work for you. The data dashboard tool is where you will analyze, interact with, and print your survey results. So once you actually have data in the system, it automatically populates in the data dashboards. 
Inside the Data Dashboard tool, you'll find five different dashboards. This is what the Overview Dashboard looks like. This provides a quick snapshot of your aggregate scores by survey topic and outcome type. As you hover over each icon, a window will appear with your total surveys in that category, as well as provide the national and state comparison averages in that category. The matrix dashboard provides a table for libraries to sort and view their scores by survey topic or program name. By sorting by score, you can see quickly where your strengths and weaknesses are in either survey topic or outcome type. You can hover over each box and see that quick breakdown of agreed and disagreed percentages as well. The chord diagram at the top allows you to hover over each segment or chord and see that breakdown again. The chords indicate strengths and weaknesses by color and thickness, so the darker purple color means a stronger score. These tools are really meant to help li libraries internally interpret the, their data. They might not necessarily use um, these exact visuals to put into um, a presentation or to present to their board because they take some time to interpret, but this is really for you to kind of play around with your results and see, um, see where your strengths and weaknesses are. The detail dashboard provides a more conventional view for libraries. Here they can see all of their results by each question in each survey. It's not by aggregate. You can see a breakdown of each question. They can filter down to the program level as well. The graph uses a median line to give that quick view of agreed and disagreed scores. And the more purple coloring and heavier responses that fall on the right side in that median line means stronger scores for that particular outcome question. Here's where you can also export any open-ended comments. You can sort and filter through them by library, date, program, or survey. So if you have, um, say, summer reading and you have over 200 responses and you just want to, you know, quickly pull a couple good quotes, you can go into the dashboard and use this um, open response viewer and export those responses. We also provide a map dashboard that displays demographic census data over your outcome scores. This will show you which branches or outlets are participating in their outcome scores, as well as provide the coinciding demographics for that particular area. This is just a start of how you can blend the many data sets available to you once you start measuring outcomes. And this is just an example of how we want people to think about outcome measurement. So if you're talking about your impact, then you can look at the demographics, which your community made out of, and you can tell a larger and better story. So quick overview. Um, the benefits of project outcome is that we provide the short and simple surveys. And by providing these surveys, it means that you're likely to get a higher response rate. Um, they are short and simple. The task force purposely designed them to be that way. They are not meant to be complicated so that patrons are not turned off by them. You'll hopefully get higher response rates so then you can talk about your impact. Uh, we aim at capturing snapshot data. We are not a rigor project outcome does not require rigorous data collection and we don't recommend talking about it that way. It's snapshot convenience sampling. As I said, the open-ended comments for each survey are a goldmine for libraries. That's where they're learning the most about how they can improve and what their patrons want. And project outcome is at your own pace. You can pick and choose surveys based on the program, the learning objective, the capacity that you have at your library. Um, it's really up to you. You can dip in and out, um, you know, kind of see if you want to measure story times and you know, you get repeat customers, so you don't want to be surveying the same people all the time. Then maybe it's once every three months you run surveys. You can kind of um, set your own schedule with project outcome. The ready-made reports and data dashboards that I just showed you do all of that heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to interpret your results. You don't have to create graphs. We've done all of that for you. Um, and of course, the standardization of the outcome measures so that you can aggregate them to a larger level and then have those national and state score comparisons. As I've said before, Project Outcome has everything you need to get started and our resources and support help guide you along the entire outcome measurement process. 
from planning for surveys to how to use the results to take action. And speaking of, I'm going to now talk through some of the different ways that we've heard our participating libraries have been able to use the results to take action. Since libraries see the results immediately, they're able to analyze their data and make quick and effective improvements to their programs and services. For example, one library used the immediate surveys to measure the effectiveness of their science kit service for one month. The library put the education and lifelong learning paper survey in each of the science kits that they loaned out. They received about 30 responses, and what they learned is that most parents and kids were unaware of the additional science programming that the library provided. One response actually said the library should provide kids programs so kids will want to come to the library more often. And this patron unawareness kind of shocked the library and resulted in um, them inserting their program brochure so that all of the science kit users could learn more about the library's hundreds of kids programs and when they were offered. 90% of the brochures did not come back with the kits. So this is an example of a small, quick, and inexpensive change that the library can make to promote awareness of their programs. Many of our participating libraries are using Project Outcome to help inform their strategic planning. You should always align outcome measurement goals to strategic goals and community initiatives. How will outcome measurement help your library reach strategic goals in the long run? You should focus outcome measurement on key areas of service. So what programs and services help you achieve your strategic goals? And remember that you are measuring progress towards strategic goals, so think about how outcome measurement data will help support your successes and identify areas for improvement. Many project outcome libraries have been able to use the positive results to reinforce their value in the community. They have been able to use the summary reports and the data dashboard views to give a clear and concise message about their patron impact. One project outcome library said they were able to change the conversation with their library board and internally with staff from numbers being down to what are we accomplishing by being open and what is happening in the lives of our patrons. And we've heard this a lot from um, many users. So it's changing the communication with their board and increasing that transparency in what we're doing and how we're doing. It's aligning what you're doing with the community and what they want it's changing conversation with staff. You might have to try to convince your staff that outcome measurement is important, but once they see the results, they're typically on board. And it's also increasing communication with patrons. So before you're administering surveys, hopefully you're explaining to them, you know, this isn't just another survey. This is telling us how we're doing, um, and we want you to be open and honest because your voice matters. We're going to make changes based on your feedback, so please don't provide, we love the library. That's great to hear, but it doesn't help inform anything for the library. Um, so we've also heard that it's nice for um, the library to have that additional communication with their patrons and to have the patrons feel that they're actually heard and that they make a difference. Libraries are also able to use their outcome data to start partnership discussions or help reinforce pre-existing partnerships. Here are some examples of how libraries have been able to do this. One library is measuring outcomes for the first time as part of a uh, regional initiative to reduce poverty. Many libraries are using key data points from the summer reading surveys, including the outcome that the child maintained or increased their reading skills as a jumping off point to start school partnership discussions. Libraries are also using their data to improve programming, which may include external partners. For example, one library received negative feedback about an instructor, so they looked to the local community college to partner on their business development classes to get better instructors and improve their patrons' learning. Libraries have also reported being able to use the results in grant applications. Um, in our December webinar, we heard from an Ohio library that was able to apply for a Dollar General grant using Project Outcome as its evaluation method to measure its impact on early readers of their summer reading program. 
We've also heard of friends groups being able to get STEAM funding for the library by using the survey results as well as just hearing that using Project Outcome, um, libraries are saving time to saving time creating their LSTA reports. So it's saving time for um, funding you might already have, um, and it's also providing opportunities to gain new funding. And now I'm going to take a break and hand things off to Beth, who's going to talk about Burnsville's experience using Project Outcome. Thank you, Samantha. Um, as you can see, we're very small. Um, we do um, we do a lot of stuff with the grade school, which is right across the street from us. Each each um, class comes in once a week, and they. Um, all of the students have library cards and they're able to check out books. Um, it, it's a nice way to introduce the kids to the library. Um, we do keep a copy, we do keep their library card with us, um, but they get their like little key tag card so that they can come in with their parents and um, get books out. And it, it's really a good program. Um, and it, it really helps the kids because our library at the school is um, strictly an accelerated reader library and it's only open on a volunteer basis um, and so it's sometimes hard to get volunteers to commit to an ongoing program. Um, the, the constraints we have are we really have you know 1.03 staff um, I am here Monday through Thursday, and then I have an assistant who is here Friday and Saturday. Um, we are almost never here together, so that makes planning programs and doing projects kind of difficult. But project outcome is so simple. If we can take the time to do it, it, it really shouldn't be a problem for anybody <laughs> to do it. Um, Wait a minute. Okay. We have, um, when I first started as director in July of 2015, um, coming from a background um, of nonprofits, nonprofit community organizations, outcomes are huge and have been huge in those, that area for years. Um, I worked four and a half years for the Mental Health Association in the Greater Canal Valley in Charleston, West Virginia, and our funding was contingent on showing the outcomes of what we were doing. And then I worked for two years um, as the staff person, but I was a volunteer with the organization. Um, it, the name of the organization was the Canal Valley Collective, and it was the HUD Continuum of Care Coalition that serves um, homeless and chronically homeless individuals. Um, and again, funding was contingent on showing your outcomes. Um, so when I saw a project outcome in an email, I already knew I wanted to start implementing surveys to try to figure out how we were doing. So it, it was actually wonderful it came right at the right time for me. Um, I just wanted to get a snapshot of what we were doing and how we were doing, how the public thought we were doing it. Um, and that it would help us do our um, program development in the future. So, and it, and it has, it has done that. Um, sorry. <laughs> the slides I had printed have the wrong notes on it, so I'm winging it. Um, no problem, I, you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> since, 
since outcome measures are new to our library and therefore new to our patrons, we've had some strange looks from people um, when I asked them to fill out a survey. Um, most of them have been extremely happy to help and once it's explained to them um, why we're doing it, you know, and that the surveys are anonymous and they're going to help us improve and implement new programs, most people are very happy to help. Um, so that's that's the bonus. Um, and our um, basic computer skills class was six people who needed help with the basics of computers. The program was a six-week program and we've had interest in holding another session of basic and then a session of more advanced skills. Um, unfortunately, with schedules, I haven't been able to make that happen yet. Um, our On Your Mark, Get Set, Read summer programming program was very exciting for us. Usually in the past, our programs had been three to four weeks only and all ages were together. Um, after I took over as director, that first initial 2015 program was the same because we had um, one of our board members took it on because we didn't have a director at the time. So she just kept it the same. But in 2016, I knew I wanted to expand it. And we did. We did separate programs for children and early literacy because I have been the parent that has the early literacy children in the regular program. And it's just very hard to keep those kids up with the bigger kids. So we wanted to make it fair for everybody and give them their own program. We also expanded the program to eight weeks and we did a pizza party at the end. We had 15 children registered for the program. Out of those 15, we had 96 that attended programs each, you know, multiple. So that was a pretty good outcome for us. With the basic computer skills, I was very happy to see that so many people felt that they had learned something. I was terrified when we first got this idea because I was the one that taught the computer class and I was very skeptical that I was going to be able to convey my knowledge to someone else. So it was a, a confidence boost for myself. It was also interesting to see that they were interested in more classes. The summer reading and caregiver results, um, it, it's always good to see that kids are reading more and wanting to come to the library more. Um, I love it. In the last month after school, I'm pretty much packed between middle school and high school students, elementary students in here. We have parents that come in when they pick up their kids from school and it's just, it's very reassuring and so such a confidence boost. Parents are often an untapped resource when it comes to planning programs. The comment section of the surveys was great to be able to see what they wanted. For the teen and child surveys we used, we did, um, we surveyed some of our younger participants. We actually had um, two outgoing kindergartners incoming first graders and an outgoing second grader incoming third grader that took our surveys. Um, and the, the only reason there was such a small number is because the last day of the program I had the surveys printed and I just forgot to hand them out. Um, but I read the survey questions to them and explained the scale and let them fill out their own answers. Um, I in no way led them to anything. I helped them with their open-ended questions. Some of them asked me how to spell Ronald McDonald. Some of them asked me how to spell pizza. Um, but that was the only help that was provided. They also asked why they were doing it. And you should have seen their faces light up when it was explained that it would help me make the program better for the next year. Everyone even the youngest participants and youngest patrons 
likes to know that they have a voice and their voice is being heard. The struggle with the struggle we have here is whether or not people will attend our programs. In the year and a half that I've been the director, we have offered several programs. Interest is growing and that's wonderful to see. Um, but what I found really encouraging was that the attendees of our basic computer skills class were asking for more. And it's always nice to hear that people enjoyed your programs, but to have a way for kids to participate in the survey was a wonderful way to get their feedback. Because if they're not liking the program, they're not telling their friends about it, and their friends aren't telling their parents, and we won't get them in. Without outcome measures, we would not have any way to know that parents are wanting homework help or peer-to-peer -peer reading groups. Plus, these measures will be utilized when trying to obtain funding from donors and grant sources. It's always good to be able to put that information in a funding request. Even though this is a new idea for the library, I have been very involved with outcome measures in other areas with other jobs. I knew I wanted to implement it, and this came along right at the exact right time. We, are, we myself, and the assistant are going to be working harder to make sure that we have a good system to obtain the survey. I love that you can print paper surveys, but that there is also an option to do it on a computer. Although I have not used that option yet, I will be implementing it. The best thing I can think of, other than the increased ability to make a program productive or viable, is the funding aspect. If you can show funders outcome measures associated with your programs, the chances that equates to funding is increased. It shows them that you care about providing and improving your programs. We are planning on using Project Outcome for, our, for each of our upcoming programs. This is such an important idea. I don't want to let any grass grow under my feet. The data and information that we collect is already being used in grant funding requests. If we can demonstrate that our patrons are learning and experiencing it, it will only increase and strengthen our ability to receive funding. And I believe that's my portion. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. That was great. Um, I just want to go through quick updates and announcements from Project Outcome, and then we will take questions. Um, since launching last, no, not last June, uh, June of 2015, Project Outcome has seen a lot of participation and a variety of programs and services measured. We have libraries in all 50 states registered, including libraries from DC and Canada. And here's a quick snapshot of our current numbers and the libraries um, represented. Over 48,000 patron surveys are currently aggregated within the Project Outcome system. The more libraries participate, the more outcome data will be aggregated and the field will move toward outcome measurement as common practice, which has been the goal of our project all along. We also sell a regional training workshop that will bring an expert trainer to your cohort or region for a deep dive training into Project Outcome. So if you receive um, state emails, um, we have about 15 trainings booked. So there might be one coming to your region. So look out for that. Um, if you're not sure, you can also contact us and we can let you know where um, the upcoming regional trainings will be. We also host free monthly webinars. This month we will be focusing on financial literacy programs and how to measure their impact, um, kind of getting people ready for Money Smart Week in April. This webinar will be on March 16th and registration is open now. You can go to the PLA website um, under online learning to find all of our archived webinars as well as our upcoming webinars. We will also be hosting a free pre-conference workshop at the upcoming ALA annual conference here in Chicago. So if anyone is planning to go to this conference, the registration form can also be found on the PLA website um, under conferences, I believe. PLA and Project Outcome will also be presenting at the Association for Rural and Small Libraries conference. 
This will be our third year attending ARSL, and it's a great opportunity for PLA to connect with libraries that might be outside our membership. So if you're planning on attending ARSL, um, look out for us. As I briefly mentioned before, Project Outcome is currently building its own custom survey portal. This new system is launching May 1st and will allow more flexibility and customization for survey design and management, including the ability to add up to three additional questions to our preset surveys. This will also include custom report building, so stay tuned for these exciting updates if you do decide to register and use Project Outcome. Speaking of, hopefully what's next is that you go on to projectoutcome.org, you register your library for free, you get started viewing our training resources, um, you decide which program you want to measure, you schedule a survey in the portal. Um, once you have data, you're analyzing your data and using it um, in the data dashboards and your ready-made reports. For communication, you can join our Facebook group, follow us on Twitter, and in also engage on our community of practice, which you can find at the bottom of our resources page. Um, this is a new feature added to the Project Outcome website, and you can access it, um, like I said, from the bottom of the resources page. This is available only to Project Outcome users, and it's a place for you to ask questions and help others out by responding to their questions in an easy-to-follow discussion forum. So this is where that kind of peer-to-peer -peer sharing and learning can happen. And now I'll open things up um, and see if Krista has any questions for us. Yeah, great. Thank you, Samantha and Beth. Beth, I'm glad you were able to hold on through the whole time so far. <laughs> uh, yeah, earlier today, maybe. Is it? Yes. There's some bad weather coming through the West Virginia area this morning, so we weren't sure how, if Beth would be able to, to hold, stick around for the whole thing, but it looks like we're going to be okay so far. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, yes, if anybody does have any questions, please do type them into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface, and I'll grab them for our presenters. Uh, yes, I was actually had was wondering about, um, we have a couple of libraries who registered today from Canada, um, mm -hmm. and I was wondering, and um, there's a school library too, yes, uh, middle school library, that's what I was looking at here. Um, I, th I was, I was interested, interesting to see that it is available for um, Canadian libraries. Is it available for anybody or is, is PLA specific to where in the world people mm -hmm. could be coming from to actually use it? Uh, great question. Um, so the tools are available and by tools I mean the survey portal and the data dashboard. Um, the tools are available for U.S. and Canadian public libraries only. Um, okay. I mean, technically, they're available for state libraries. We have uh, state access, so if you sign up um, your state library staff, you actually will gain access to all the participating libraries in your state, um, which the states have really liked. Um, but school libraries... Um, you know, academic libraries, research libraries. We don't have the capacity to build out the tool to accommodate those libraries at this time. Um, as well as they might have some specific things they want to look at too that maybe that are different from what public libraries are needing to ask. Yeah, about. the whole yeah. the whole system kind of revolves around having a specific library key. Um, that ties all of your data together. So everything works and talks to each other between the dashboards and the survey portal and your, um, you know, your IMLS data is imported. Um, so right now, just the capacity that we have, our focus is really on public libraries since we are PLA. Of course, um, yes. But anyone can register on the website. And by registering on the website, you get access to all of our um, resources. So you can kind of take what we've done and adapt it to what you need. So the that's, surveys... That's what you, I was wondering, yeah, yeah. Is, 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 some of it is just publicly out there that you can... Yeah, yeah. it is publicly out there. We want anyone um, to measure outcomes. Part of our initial grant with the Gates Foundation is to just um, 
have outcome measurement become that common practice. So whether or not you can use our actual tools, you can adapt our questions and adapt them for what you need um, and measure your own outcomes. Um, it just wouldn't be in our specific survey portal. Um, but the surveys are available on the website itself under the resources, so you can kind of, you know, take those and create your own surveys. Mm -hmm. Right. It's still, you just wouldn't have the built-in right. tools that are all there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question. A library that says, um, we have been participating in project outcomes since the beginning, but have not used it as systematically as we would like. Mm -hmm. um, Dope. Uh, she says, when I clicked on the data dashboard, I was recently redirected to the Global Gates Foundation website, and I could not find the old data dashboard. Um, and um, do you know what's going on with that? And any suggestions uh, for them? Yeah. Um, well, data. email me um, if you're still <laughs> having that problem. Um, so we work with a company called Community Attributes and they uh, build and host our data dashboard and Community Attributes also built the Gates Foundation Global Library Atlas so oh, we kind okay. of took what they built for um, the Global Libraries Atlas um, with the visuals that they were already using and the mapping function and we kind of incorporated it into Project Outcome so if you were redirected um, that was probably by mistake, or if you don't have any data entered, the data dashboards don't display anything for you. Um, but email me if you are still seeing that error message. That should not be happening. <laughs> so okay. let me know. You can email info at projectoutcome.org, and I can help you with that. There you go, info at project. Mm -hmm. I was, that's what I was going to ask. I know what's, for what's I know, that. Yeah. yeah, I know for. Um, this was a few weeks ago. If it was during this time frame that was happening, people were seeing the Global Libraries Atlas when they were signing in, and they were like, "What's this? This looks cool." <laughs> but technically, <laughs> no, that's just our our host Not website. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a sister website of ours. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she said thanks, and that yep, that's exactly what was happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe just need I, to check and see if it's still happening now. Right. If it's still happening, hopefully something would have been changed. Know. Yeah. Yes. We were having a bug that day, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, another question, uh, Samantha. You mentioned peer data. Um, can you tell us where that data comes from? Um, the peer data. Like how is that? Uh, how do you decide who's the peers? So right now we don't have a breakdown of peer-to-peer um, -peer, as in like by library size. The only comparison pieces we have in the dashboards is by state and then just nationally. So if you're looking at your summer reading results um, and you kind of hover over those icons in the dashboard, you'll see the comparison of anyone who ran summer reading in your state and then nationally. Um, we're working on kind of broadening those comparisons so people can see more of who their peers are based on maybe LSA. Um, so that's kind of coming in the future, but right now we only have the state and national comparisons. But if you want to talk to peers, you can go on the Community of Practice board and kind of see what other people are doing um, or kind of start your own threads if you have a group that you want to specifically work with. It's still new. We're trying to point people to that so that it's not always coming to PLA for advice or questions. Um, but yeah, that's that's the only thing we have right now because we're trying to kind of walk that fine line between sharing data and keeping privacy. Right, yes. Um, so when you go into the map dashboard, you're only seeing your library system. You're not seeing everyone. Um, so we're trying to work on how we can better display at least participation without revealing results. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's coming with the new um, updates in yeah. May. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, we do have another question that just came in. Um, this librarian says, I sit on a regional library system board. Um, how can project outcome fit with a regional system? Um, That's something they could use. Yeah, so if you don't act as a public library, but you have public libraries as members of your system, or if you're a consortium, mm -hmm. um, you can act as a group. So what we would do is work with you um, kind of create an account for you to sign up and have libraries be assigned to your group so that you could see 
um, all of their survey data and work with them on um, so you're kind of helping them do their own surveys and then you can kind of act as administrator um, so we do and have that feature that available and it will be compare with their peers and that compare with each other in that group yes so by group it would roll up um, to all of those member libraries, then you would see that comparison. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, yes, exactly. So if you're part of a group, then you um, kind of act as almost how the state view works. Um, so you kind of are administrator and can see that high level comparison piece, like you just said, across those member libraries. But you do have to contact PLA to get that kind of account set up because it's not, the system isn't naturally set up like that. That's very cool. So you don't have to just so you don't. It's just not. It doesn't have to be independent. Independent libraries. If you do have someone who you want to like help out. Yeah, we have a couple. That would be kind of a yeah. Yeah, we have groups. We also have people who come to me like, you know, we have public libraries in our membership, but we also have other libraries in our membership. Can we do something for just the public libraries? Um, so we'll kind of work to create a special group for them, um, and then in the new survey portal. It'll be even easier to create groups, and you'll have more flexibility in creating your own surveys to send out to your member libraries. It'll be really kind of easy and seamless. Yeah, and this would be different from you said that there's state. There is also state library access where the state library is not setting up some giant state group. It's just anybody who happens to be in your state right. using it. Right, that's the state kind of library how can see yeah. their info. Yes, so the states okay. are already built into the system. For groups, we have to build them. So, okay. cool. yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right, we're a little after 11 o'clock, um, and we did start a little after to begin with. Uh, anybody have any last-minute desperate questions they want to ask Samantha or Beth? Type them into your GoToWebinar interface so we can get them um, answered for you right now. Otherwise, you can um, you know reach out to them elsewhere. Um, you said the, the email address for anything project outcomes, Samantha, again? Yes, is info at projectoutcome.org. Um, that's the help desk, a.k.a. me. Um, <laughs> so I will receive all of your questions and can help okay. you. Um, and best information is also on our website um, because anyone who presents with us is on our speaker wall of fame. Oh. And we have um, links to their slides or their presentations as well as their contact information. Mm -hmm. So if someone kind of really speaks to you and you want to learn more about their experiences, you can, you know, go there and reach out to them as well. So someone who you do think of as a peer, huh? Right, <laughs> right. Good. Trying to connect to each other, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, doesn't look like anybody's typed in anything right now, so I think we will wrap it up this morning. Then we're about perfectly into our hour time. Sounds good. Um, thanks so much, uh, guys, Samantha and Beth. I'm glad we were, as I will get you on, as I said, I had had this on, had this project outcome on my radar since sometime last year. I don't remember if I saw it online in some journal I read, um, uh, but I was been keeping an eye out for this. And um, and actually, for those of you who may know, um, I think it was Beth, yeah, uh, Last week, last Friday, we did our big talk from Small Libraries Online Conference, also co-sponsored by ARSL, who we love here in Nebraska, too, <laughs> um, had submitted to go on that, and we had a lot of proposals submitted to conference, way too many that I that I could put in for one day, but luckily, I was able to have you guys come on to our weekly show here, so um, glad to have the info. Um, so I think we will wrap it up this morning. Any last words? Beth, you're still here with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> My thing is, just jump in and do it. Um, it really is very easy, and there really isn't a whole lot of time involved. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a good thing. So much has been done on the website for you for you yes. that it's all like pre-made, which that is a lot of the. I know when I we have we use. Um, we do surveys and evaluations of some of our sessions and workshops and programs we do here, and the the setting up ahead of time is is really the longest amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jump in, as Beth says. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, all right, thank you. Um, I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen now, off of Samantha's here. And I have here, once it pops up, um, there we go. This is the Project Outcome website that um, they're mentioning here uh, with all the different resources on it. Uh, in our, um, when I do a record, our recordings afterwards for Encompass Live, I do capture all of these and I have been saving them to our Delicious account here. And so they will be the links to this, um, the PLA's online learning library, the uh, session that was for, um, at P at could be at ALA on here, so all of this you will have afterwards. Um, here they have their upcoming events, other things you can attend. Oh, and there's our Encompass Live. Awesome. <laughs> um, so uh, definitely take a look there on their site. Let's see, I'll get back over here. All right, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you very much everyone for attending and uh, as I said here is our Encompass Live website um, you can to find our site is nlc.nebraska.gov forward slash Encompass Live or if you just Google Encompass Live we apparently are the only thing calling themselves that so far yay um, so we come up in the first search results that come up anywhere um, but here is our archives underneath our upcoming shows is a list of all of our archives and this is where, where today's recording will be um, posted we'll have the link to the YouTube video um, handouts um, or not handouts the um, web Websites that were mentioned um, will be on there as well. Um, later today, this should be available. I'll send you guys all an email and announce when it is ready for you to take a look there. Um, so, also, I uh, hope you'll join us for our um, other upcoming shows we have. Uh, next week, we have planning for successful in. In internships. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission we do a uh, Nebraska Library Internship Grant Program so um, we'll be talking about that next week about that coming up but it's also good research, resources and information about internships in general um, how you can do one at your library whatnot um, you know how you can make that work you can get people in, in, into your library to learn more about what it's like to work in a library so um, definitely sign up for that and any of our other upcoming shows um, also Encompass Live is on Facebook so if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. I do post on here um, reminders about upcoming shows. Here this morning I did a, a reminder to log in on the fly for people who hadn't pre-registered. Um, when our recordings are available, anything new that comes up about the show, I post here as well. So if you are on Facebook as we are, um, give us a like over there. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning's show. Thank you very much for attending, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.